Hello friends, this is Ishan on behalf of Edureka. So today we are going to see sorting and searching in arrays. So there are various different algorithms through which we can sort the elements in an array and same way we can even do searching. Now typically when you are in an e-commerce shopping website, let's say Amazon or any other e-commerce, so you want to sort the items on the basis of the price, right? So that's like either ascending way or the descending way. So one of the practical usages where you can actually apply these sorting algorithms. So these are some commonly used algorithms and they have their own, you know, time and space complexities, but we are not going to discuss that in detail here. So we'll typically see how they work and how we're going to solve this problem to sort the data in an array. So we got bubble sort, selection sort, insertion sort, quick sort and merge sort as algorithms which we are going to discuss for the day. So let's begin with bubble sort. So guys given the sorting techniques. So when it comes to the bubble sort, it's one of the simplest sorting algorithm, right? So what it's going to do is it's going to perform the swapping of the adjacent elements in case they are in a wrong order, right? So we're gonna always swap the adjacent elements if they are in a wrong order. So we are considering that we're gonna sort the array elements in an ascending arrangement. So let us see how it's gonna work. So consider that we got set of elements as 4, 1, 10, minus 3, and 12. So what bubble sort will do? So in case of bubble sort, so we'll start one of the iteration. So consider the ith iteration. So we'll start from the zeroth index and we'll compare the index zero with the index zero plus one. That's like four and one. We are going to compare here. So when we compare, we find that four is greater than one. So we swap the elements. Now the next is where we are comparing four and ten. So four and ten will pass because four is lesser than ten. Then we'll move on to the next adjacent elements. That's like ten and minus three. So when we compared them, we found that minus three is a smaller one. So we swap them and same way when we compare 10 and 12. So it's perfectly fine. So let's pass now in the next iteration. So we'll again begin and we'll now start from the next index of the ith loop. So here now we'll see minus three and four has been swapped and thereafter we will compare four and ten and finally guys the last iteration so on and so forth will finally sort the array. So what we are doing, we are just comparing the adjacent elements. So if one is found to be lesser than the other, so you swap them, right? So let's try to write a small code snippet on bubble sort and see how it's going to work for us. So I'll write one small program here. So let's create a new class. So I'll say a bubble sort with the main method. So considering that we got the elements of an array. So let us take the same use case. So 4, 1, 10, minus 3 and 12. So this is the input sequence, right? So this is something which we are looking forward to sort. Now in order to sort, I'll write one method here. So let's say this goes like static void. I'm just going to say sort here. So I'll take array as input. So the array which I want to sort and here will come up and say bubble sort dot sort the ARR. So we're passing by reference. It means that if you sort this reference, right? So automatically this will be sorted. So it's basically reference concept which we are using here. So the first thing first. So I'm going to now calculate the length of the array. So let's say length is ARR dot length. So this is the size of array more or less, right? So we run one loop. So this is let's say the outer loop which starts from zero and this loop shall go till less than your length minus one and thereafter I'll say an I plus plus. So it means that this loop will go from zero. So this I loop is going to work from the zero index, then one, then two, and then three, right? Not the last one, right? So it's less than length minus one, right? So if the length of my array is five, so let's say the length is five. So the outer loop here shall work from zero to three. 
so it's length minus one so we want to iterate it here now i'll have one more loop so let's say it is a j loop so j loops begin with zero and j loop will run from zero to length minus of i and minus of one and then i'm gonna say j plus plus it means the jth loop is dependent on the ith value so if the i value is zero consider that if i is zero so your j will vary from zero to now length minus i minus one right so what the length length is pi minus zero minus one that's like zero to four so on and so forth it's gonna work for the other indices of i now let us compare in case the arr's jth index is greater than arr's j plus one index right so if the element is greater we are checking for the adjacent elements now if the adjacent elements are being compared and we find that arr j is the greater guy so we'll swap it right and we'll use the swapping technique as a very basic swapping technique so we'll have a temporary variable in which i'm gonna put this jth element and thereafter we we'll have arr's jth element allocated with the arr j plus one and lastly we'll have arr j plus one having the 10. so i'll just write down here swap the adjacent elements and this is how our log is gonna work right so we keep on swapping and once this entire swapping is done the loops are terminated so you will get one sorted arrangement of your elements so when you say bubble sort dot sort the air so now if you say for loop let's say int element in the arr so i'll simply see so i'll say element with some space so you run the code here as java application so what you see is a sorted arrangement of your array minus three one four ten and well so this is the very first and the very basic technique called bubble sort so we compare the adjacent elements and we swap them so guys let's move next so for our next sorting algorithm we got something known as selection sort so guys selection sort is also one of the sorting algorithms and here this guy will sort an array by finding the minimum element and putting it to the beginning so we'll keep on repeatedly doing these steps we'll find the minimum element repeatedly and we'll just place it in the beginning of the array so that is how our selection sort is going to work right so let us understand this so when we are in the first iteration so we exactly are trying to see the minimum number and we will find that minus three is the minimum number in the first iteration so we'll put it in the beginning now we'll shift the next index and we'll just keep on comparing and we'll see that one is the shortest one so let it be there so thereafter we'll move the index to the next position and we'll see now who is the other small element we'll find that four is the small element will now come up and put it in the beginning and lastly we are in the sorted set right so selection sort is comparing the number so we are just going to compare the number with all the elements wherever we find the shortest element we put it to the beginning right so let us have one small program with respect to selection sort and see how it's going to work for us so the way we got bubble sort i'm going to say a new class here let us say this goes like selection sort with the main method so we'll take the same use case so instead of having this bubble sort will have selection sort so i'll create a similar sort method so let me copy this so we'll have a similar method where we're gonna sort the data right so the structure begins in the same way so the thing is we need to come up and iterate for the same structure we're gonna iterate from zero to length minus one so the internal structure it's gonna be a bit different now right so what i'll do is i'll first of all assume that the minimum element or you can say that minimum element on the index is the element at the ith index right so the minimum element right so i'll just write here so assuming minimum element is at ith index so assuming this part now right and we'll now look for any element who is a minimum in this so for that i'll put up a loop which starts as in j's value with i plus one 
and j shall run less than the length of the array so we are iterating over the entire array and if in case we say that arr of j is less than arr of minimum index so considering that what we have is we have the jth element less than the minimum index element so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say let minimum index go as j so in the array we are finding the minimum index and once we got the minimum element so our minimum index over here means guys we are targeting the minimum element right so here we are targeting the values not the index so we are just catching the index of the minimum element now once we capture that so thereafter what i'm gonna do is i'll swap the minimum element with the first element so swap minimum element with first element so what i'll do now is i take up one temporary variable in which i'm gonna store the minimum index so thereafter let's have arr of minimum index with arr of i and thereafter the arr of i will be having the temporary so this is like swapping the element and not the adjacent elements the way we had in the bubble sort so this is a different way of dealing with things but at the same time when you will execute this program of yours so what you find is the data is again sorted for us so how these algorithms are different so they have different approaches to solve the same problem so they vary in time and space complexity of course but that is not something which we are going to take now so guys this is something known as selection sort right so how we are selecting the element which is minimum and then putting it into the beginning now let us move to the next part so guys next part we're gonna come up and discuss something known as insertion sort now what is insertion sort so when i'm talking about insertion sort so this is very much similar when we are playing the cards so what we do is we have the smallest card and we put it in the beginning so here we are going to work in the same way right so we wanna uh, pick an element and insert into the sorted sequence so let's see one iteration that how insertion sort will be working for us so for insertion sort let's assume the same input so when we will compare four and one so you see that over here we got four and one being compared so we'll swap them and now we'll move into the guy called 10 and the day after we see that minus three is again a small element so we're gonna shuffle it to the beginning so it's just like the way you sort your cards so finally you get a sorted sequence right so guys insertion sort is something which is sorting the data in a different approach for us so here we are going to again find the smallest value and swap the same right let's try to write a code snippet on insertion sort and see how it's gonna work for us so let me come here and create a new class so this goes like insertion sort with the main method so let me take a similar method here so we'll call it sort itself and coming here so we are going to work from 0 to length that's like 0 to 4 so we'll take the same sequence and we'll see how it's gonna work for us so i'm gonna say insertion sort dot sort right so let's now write the code to sort the array now i'll first of all consider that there is a key which is basically arr of i so we're assuming that the very first index itself is a key and i'm going to now create one j which shall be your i minus one so basically i want to move the elements of the arr from zero to this j so that whatsoever are greater than the key to the position ahead of their current position right so let me write the code that's gonna be more helpful for us so here i'll say while j is greater than and equal to zero and arr of j is greater than t so run the loop till we have these conditions being satisfied and if the loop is in execution so what i'll do is i'll say arr of j plus one you just copy the arr of j and you decrement the value of j by one and once this loop is terminated come out of the loop and we'll have j plus one index with the key so that is how we are sorting the array over here guys so in order to sort what we are doing over here is we are moving elements of ER from zero to i minus one right but we are moving only those elements which are greater than key and where we are moving so we are moving them to one position ahead of 
they are current position so if the current position is j we are moving it to j plus one exactly the way we do it in the cards right so we are just moving them one position so guys now let us try to run the same code and see what happens for the sorting technique over here so what we see is insertion sort has also sorted the array and the technique is modified but the outcome still remains the same so insertion sort in action so guys once now we have since understood what is insertion sort so we'll be now moving into the other algorithm called quick sort quick sort is not as in that it's really a quicker algorithm to sort the elements but when it compares itself to the merge sort yes it is quicker so what exactly happens in the quick sort algorithm so guys it's a divide and conquer algorithm so what we do is we partition our array and then we try to solve the problem so consider the set of elements 9541723 and 6 so what we try to do over here is we will decide one of the elements in this array which can be serving as a pivot or a pivot so the pivot element is an element which can be either the first element the last element or the middle element or any random element of your choice so it can be any element now the whole idea is to choose this pivot element and break your array in such a way that all the elements left to the pivot should be less than or equal to it and the right to the same pivot we should have greater than elements so we are going to make our pivot to go into the exact position so this way we will be coming up and sorting up the entire array so shifting the pivot to the right position will be our key success now consider six is the pivot number from the entire list of sequence now consider the ith index or the ith variable and a jth variable so the variable j will be iterating over the array and we will be comparing each and every element to the pivot that's like six so considering when your j is zero that's like the number nine so we want to compare six and nine so we know that when you compare the number six and nine so nine is greater than six right so we are okay to go with it now we increment the j and we bring it to the five when you compare five and six we find that this j element is less than the five so whosoever is less it should move in the beginning or to the left so what we are going to do is if we find the element lesser than the pivot we are going to move it to the beginning or we are just going to swap number nine and number five and now i am again reiterating on the jth index and i have incremented the i index as well so let's say initially i was pointing to this guy five but when we did a swap on nine and five we incremented the variable i as well now the new number with the jth index is four so if you compare six and four so we understood that four is lesser than six so what we will be doing is we will be reswapping your number nine and four and then increment i now again six and one there compare and we see that one is less so you again swap but seven is greater you don't swap but two is what which we know is lesser so what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap your two with the nine so on and so forth so lastly what you will have is you'll have the elements that's like five four one two and three which are lesser than the six and nine and seven greater than the six so we get this six exactly positioned after three and before nine right so guys that is how we are doing this partition and then we are sorting the structure so let's see a code snippet on quick sort so i have this code up through here so what i have is i have the input sequence of the same elements nine five four one seven two three and six so we got this sort method here where i'm passing array the zeroth index the length minus one so these are the initial inputs to the sort method so here we are with the sort method so if you got low less than the high which exactly it is so we are going to call the method partition with the array low and high now partition method is working in the same way so we are considering the pivot as the last index so high means the last index the last element now index of the smaller element shall be low minus one so that's like we are treating this variable i and we are iterating in the j loop which will iterate in the entire array so if the arj is less than the pivot we are going to swap arri and arj and we'll also increment the variable i and finally once you are done with everything so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move our pivot to the right place so eventually entire array to the left of pivot should be less or equal and to the right will be greater so putting the pivot to the correct position that is what we did in this partition method so recursively we are going to sort it and till time we don't get the correct elements in the list we keep on sorting them
So when we run this code quick sort dot sort and you see we will have the elements in the correct order That's like one two three four five six seven, and nine. So this is what we got as in quick sort guys, right? So guys now let's have look at the other algorithm for sorting that's like the merge sort now merge sort is also a divide and conquer algorithmic approach so what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide the array in two halves right so you say it as left and the right one so here what we will be doing is we'll take one example of the same sequence for 1 10 minus 3 and 12 so we're gonna divide this array into two different halves so once you divide the array so you keep on dividing the array further so you see once you are dividing the array you divide till we got all the single individual elements and once we have all the single individual elements right so they after we start working on merging these arrays right so here guys will write something known as a merge function which will merge the two halves based on which is greater which is smaller so what we're gonna do is we're gonna merge first of all one and four we'll see that one is small number so we're gonna place it first and then we're gonna bring it forward right so so on and so forth we keep on merging the elements and we'll uh, first of all finish the merge on the left array then we'll finish the merge on the right array and lastly we're gonna merge left and right array both which will be the socket arrangement at the end so in this merge sort algorithm divide the arrays into two sub arrays left and right so thereafter you sort the arrays at the end right so let's have a quick look on how this algorithm can work for us so i already have the code snippet for this so let me just open it so here we are so now typically for merge sort algorithm how it's gonna work is so we got this function called merge and i'm gonna take the same sequence of inputs that's like 4 1 10 minus 3 and 12 so just give me a moment so 4 1 10 minus 3 and 12 right so what we are doing here let's see now so we got this guy called merge as one method which is supposed to merge two arrays and if you will see over here we got sort which is going to sort the two arrays and they after it's gonna merge so i'm going to initiate my program by executing the sort method right so for the sort method i am passing array to be sorted i'm passing the lower index that's like zero and i'm passing the higher index that's like your length minus one so this is zeroth index and this guy is the fourth index now in case l is less than r which it is so we are going to come up and say let us find the mid l plus r by 2 and we are now calling the sort method twice the first sort happens on the ar l comma m the second sort happens on m plus 1 and r right so once we sort the left and the right part then we are going to merge both of them so here when i'm doing the sorting so you need to understand that it's a recursive call so we are calling the method again and again until this condition is satisfied so what happens in the merge part so here what we see is we got two different sizes right so s1 s2 are the two different sizes for the arrays so we are creating the left array and the right array based on two different sizes so left and the right array size so what i do is i copy the elements in the left array and in the right array so this is merge over here method so this is going to merge two arrays which we partition and you got l -A -R -A, which will be working from your l to m and we have this guy called let's say r a r, -A -R. So there is sub array 1 and sub array 2, right? So I just say error 1 and this guy error 2. So the second array is going to work from m plus 1 till r. Now we are copying the element to so create sub arrays. So this is like create sub arrays. And here what we are doing is we are copying elements into sub arrays. And now once we have copied the elements, so we'll start the process of merging, right? So let's say start merging process here. Now the merging process, so what we got is we got indexes for the first and the second array. So I'll take the zero index to be the initial index. And once I've taken that, so I'll take the initial index of merged sub array array. So that's the case L. Now while your i is less than the s1 and j is less than s2, so what we will be doing is we'll be further checking if i index in the left is less than or equal to if it is so, we're gonna assign the ARR's kth index with the i index in the left i, and then you increment the i. Other way around, it's the right array which has to be considered. So till i will be less than s1, we are going to come up and copy the i index in the left array into the kth index, and then you increment i and k. Lastly, guys, if the J index is less than S2, you do it for the same part, but you are doing it in the right array. So we got something as merge process and we got something as sort process. So when you run this code here, so eventually you will again get the sorted outcome. So guys, sorting can work in various different ways. So we got this technique called merge sort. We'll keep on dividing the array. And thereafter, once you have individual elements, you start the merging sequence. So this is the final outcome that how you want to work with it. Next part is how we are going to search in the eyes. The first one is linear search. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna identify an element that whether it is there in the eye or not. 
So begin from the zeroth index, we'll keep on advancing till the last index. So once the element is found, we get to know the index, which index it is, and thereafter we return back the index. So in the linear search operation, so we get to see that there are few inputs to the method. So we're gonna return the index of the element which is found, right? So considering the use case, right? So we are planning to have this linear search. So we'll write one small program. Let's have it the main method. So I'm going to take the same sequence of inputs which we have been following. So this is the array. And let's say the element which you want to search is the number 10, whether the 10 is there or not. So I'll write down this static int search, or let's say this is a linear search. So in the linear search, I'll pass one array and the element which I want to search, right? So this is how we are going to come up with the linear search approach. So we'll get to find the index. So by default, I'm keeping the value of index as minus one, and I will return the index at the end. Now you just say for int i is zero, i less than the ar dot length and i plus plus, right? So you are trading the entire i. So less than length is your n. Now if element is going to match the arr of i, right? So if it is going to match the arr of i, so I'm gonna say index is i, and thereafter I'm going to break the loop. So now you come here and say int found index is linear search dot linear search array and the element 10. We know where is the 10 element, right? The 10 element is at 0, 1, and 2, second index. So let's say if i is not equal to minus 1, we'll find the element and, uh, sorry, so this guy is found index. So let's say if the found index is not less than, I mean not equal to minus 1, so we got the element in the else case, I'll say c so element plus element not found. Or the other way around, I'll say c so element plus the element found at plus the found index. So this is what we got. So now when you run this code here, so it says element 10 found at two index, right? So it's the second index where you have this element 10. Let's say this guy has 12, you run the code, it's gonna say at four index, but if you try to enter something like 120, so you're gonna get element 120 not found. So guys, linear search algorithm is where you begin from the zero index and keep on comparing till the last index, right? So the next searching technique over here with us is binary search. So in the binary search, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna sort the array first, right? So we should have a sorted set of array. And when you are going to find the element, so you are dividing this array into two parts. So we're gonna divide the array as in the left side and
and the right side so if you are finding some array in the binary search right so this is now very much simple approach what we did in a linear search but the only thing is this we'll be searching the element into a corresponding half so we keep on dividing the array to find the element okay so now let's the guy over here is gonna check whether r is greater than or equal to l so if r is greater than or equal to l then we're gonna find the mid so the mid goes like l plus r minus l divided by 2. so we got the mid part and now so i'll use recursive technique over here so in case so let's say if element is found at the same middle index so i'll just keep a check that if arr of mid is equal to this guy called x then you just return this guy called mid so i'll return the middle index itself right now there can be the other possible use cases so let's say if element is smaller than the middle in case element is smaller than the middle so it means what hence element shall be present in the left part of array so element would be there in the left array and hence what i'll do is i'll just put up a small condition that in case arr of mid is greater than the x the element which we are going to found so here i will again do the binary search so i'm going to do again the binary search but the binary search now so i'll go with mid minus one and i'm finding the same guy x right so we find the same guy x over here and lastly guys so i'm gonna say return me so return me a binary search of arr your mid plus one right and x so else the element will only be available in the right part of array so this is the case where element shall be present in the right part of array so if it is the left so you execute this so return from here else uh, you come if this condition fails we're gonna return this part and let's say if we reach to a stage where element is not at all every right so the element is not present then what then you should return minus one so let's try to come and say return of minus one so here you want to perform a binary search called binary search and you need to make sure that the array is in a sorted arrangement right so we'll say this array over here so you need to sort this array first so what I can do is I can just make it minus 3, 1, 4, 10, and 12, right? So that's like the precondition. Array must be sorted first. Now, when your array is uh, sorted, so let's say you need to find the element called 4. And in the binary search, you pass the AR. That's like the first thing. Then you pass your zero index. So guys, let me just take some more input here. So let's say the length is AR dot length. So this is the length of the AR. And I'll pass length minus one and the element which i want to search so we are searching for this guy called four let's give a small run on this and let's try to see what happens so it says element four found at second index let's search for 12 it says at fourth index and when i say 120 you give a run here it says 120 not found so guys this is a binary search operation you keep on dividing your array into sub arrays to the left and to the right and then follow that array in which your element would be present right so 